in the military and in general, have you contemplated your mortality? Have you been afraid of death? What was what's your relationship like with death? I was willing to accept an oversized amount of risk, I'll say, when I was younger as an aviator. Yeah. Not not in the jet, but just that was my life. You know, I felt like I was gonna live forever. Um and going out into war, you know, strangely didn't really change that because, you know, as an aviator, again, we're riding up high on our horse up there. So there were times when I was in situations that could have resulted in death from from flying or from emergency um, in the aircraft. But I'll be honest, I never really kind of sat down to think about the moral the mortality of it afterwards. I feel like I kind of signed a check at the beginning. And it was my job to perform as well as I could. And if something happened in that, then I better damn well be sure I would do my best at the time then. Um, so, you know, I, I maybe didn't personally reflect on it as much as of it. I, one would think, you know, because once you get in that machine, it doesn't give you a lot of time to sit back and philosophize on, on your current situation. And the same, just like we weren't seeing these, ob or when we seen these objects off the coast, we weren't necessarily, you know, examining them every day, right? We'd put them into that bucket because it wasn't something that was going to kill us right away. Um, and thinking about death when you're so close to it all the time would be debilitating. It would probably make you worse at your job. It would. Well, maybe you can think about death when you look out when you go out into nature and think like the, the, the fact that this whole ride ends. It's a, such a weird thing. And the the old makes way to new, and that's all throughout nature. And if you just look at the the cruelty of nature, or the beauty of nature, however you think about it, the the fact that the the big thing eats the little thing, <laughs> over and over, um, and that's just how it progresses, and that's how adaptation happens. Death is a requirement for uh, evolution, and you know whether evolution allows us to see objective reality or not. Uh, it still gives you some interesting thoughts about perspectives of death, and it, especially concerning it's a biological necessity as far as evolution is concerned. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird that uh, there's, there's been like a hundred billion people that lived before us, and that you and I will be forgotten. This whole thing we're doing right now is, is meaningless in that sense, but that at the same time, it feels deeply meaningful somehow. Um, I guess that that's the question I want to ask. When you go out to nature, with family, what do you think is the meaning of it all? What's the meaning of life? Or maybe when you put on the night goggles, the, the night vision goggles and look up at the stars, why are we here? I can't speak for everyone, but at least the way I interpret it, you know, or at least I, I feel like I interpret my way here. My job is, I feel like my role is just to be curious about the environment in a manner that allows us to understand as much as possible. I think that the human mind, whether it's just the mass inside our skull or you know, whether there's some type of quantum interactions going on, our mind is an incredible, has incredible ability to output new information in, in a universe that you know, somewhat stale of information, right? Um, our our minds are in some somewhat unique in that we can imagine and perceive things that could never ever have possibly naturally occurred, and yet we can make it happen. We can instantiate that with enough belief that it's true and it can happen. And so, for me, I feel like I just need to encourage that to encourage you know interaction with reality, such that it leads us to newer and grander you know interactions with this universe. And all that starts with a little bit of curiosity. Exactly. Ryan, you're an incredible person. Uh, <laughs> you've done so many things and there's so much still uh, still ahead of you. Thank you for being brave enough to talk about UFOs um, and doing it so seriously. And thank you for pushing forward on all these fronts in terms of technology. So from um, just the fighter jets, the, the, the engineering of that, to the AI ML applications in the combat setting, that's super interesting. And then now quantum, I can't wait to see, to see what you do next. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking today. It was an honor. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Lex.